Hi, I'm Steve. I'd like to welcome you to this video. For this particular video, what I've done is I've taken a series of typical progressions that occur over and over again in country and country rock music. And for them, I've written several solo courses of solos through each one, demonstrating techniques and devices that I like to use in my playing. And we're going to show you all those. But before we do, before we get started, let's get tuned up. Here we go. Here's an E or six string. What I've done is I've taken a four bar progression. G seventh for a bar, C seventh for a bar, D seventh for a bar, and then back to G seventh for a bar in a typical country two beat or fast polka. And I've written several three courses, I believe three or four over, over this progression demonstrating fast single note lines. So let's play it for you and then we'll see if we can't break it down and show you what I was doing. If we could tip the band, please. <laughs> Okay, so let's take that one course at a time, even smaller than that, let's take that one lick at a time. For the first course, I start here in the second position, and let me play what I played for the first course, and then we'll break it down. One, two, one, two, three. Okay, so you can see that that first chorus takes place all within the second position, second and third position. So I'm starting on the D string here with an upstroke. Now just watch closely. I think the best way for you to learn this is... Okay, there I'm shifting from B flat to B natural with a slide. Okay, that's all in the third position now. Then, for the four chord, or C7th, I move down to the open position, starting with a B flat. Then a slide, and down to C. Then for the D, I'm walking down on the fourth string from G. Okay, and then a slide, you can see that. F to F sharp, third finger. Then D to D flat. And a big stretch up to F natural. Okay, then I just finish with a G lick out of a basic G chord. Okay, now let's play it at a reduced tempo so you can play along. One and two and three, four. Moving on to the second chorus, I shift up to the seventh position, and here's what I played without the music. One, two, three, four. So you can see the second chorus is in two positions, the seventh and the twelfth. Starting first, I'm going to start on D, P play, then play open E, and a slide. Now watch closely. Chromatic, C, and then chromatic back up to C, and slide from E flat to E, so I'm in the eighth position now, G to A, then I'm going to slide backwards now from E flat to 
to D and then back to C. Okay? Then I shift up to the 12th position and I start with a slide chromatically from B flat up to D. Rock my pinky over to catch the high G. Right out of a major pentatonic scale. And I end with a G country lick. Finally at the 12th fret. Here is the whole thing intact at a reduced tempo. One, and two, and three, and four, and. Notice I'm alternate picking, strictly. Okay. The third chorus, I'm starting in the 10th position. Now let me play that chorus again without the band. One, and two, and three, and four, and. Okay, S slowly. One, and two, and three, and four, and. C, important. Another important move, B flat to B, E, D, B flat to A. Okay. Chromatic, open D, slide, then chromatic down to C, right at the four chord. Alternate picking. For the five chord, I'm going to start with a slide. Let me do that solely. Okay. Let's play the whole chorus at a reduced tempo. One, and two, and three, and four, and... And for the fourth chorus, I'm moving up here in the 15th position. And I'm starting with a bend, half step bend. And back down to the 15th fret, 17th to the 15th on the second string. And I do that same thing again. Then I do the same thing a third time without the bend. So I get this. And it sounds like. And as you remember, the second court, the second lick that I played was exactly the same as the first. However, I drop now this note down a half step to this note and play the same lick with a half step bend in there. Actually, no, because it's in, you want to make this sound like a C seventh lick, you might want to bend that note up a whole step so you bend to the root. And everything else remains exactly the same. Third time again without the bend. Now, to make that lick sound like a D seventh, move that finger down, the top note down again, one note, same lick, and again, bend a whole step, or a half step, either one works, and then end on G. Let's play that section now at a reduced tempo, one, and two, and three, and four, and... And there you have the entire section on fast single note lines. And this next section, we'll call it 
for lack of a better word, we call it open string scales or open string ideas. Now, first of all, what are open string ideas? Well, using, using a, a lick on the guitar, employing open strings instead of all fretted notes. Now, this is one of the, my pet techniques that I really like to use, especially in, in country rock music, because most of the tunes are written in sharp keys as opposed to flat keys. And if we start it with the key of C and go right around the circle of fifths, we find that in the key of C, the six strings of the, of the guitar are all diatonic, meaning that they're all extracted from the C scale. So conceivably, in the key of C, you could use all six strings open. And you, moving right around to the key of G, the same thing occurs. All six strings are diatonic. So you could conceivably play anything in the key of G using any and all your open strings. The key of D, the same thing. Then when you move over to the key of A, you start getting blue notes. And what I mean by blue notes are notes out of the minor pentatonic or blues scale. Specifically, the G natural note on the G open third string will give you a, get the, the flat seven. I'll, I'll, I'll show you some ideas in this that I like. As soon as we get through this, a little more. Then we get to the key of E and we get even more blue notes. We get the flat three and the flat seven. And then after you get around to more to, to the to the key of B and F sharp, then you start losing the effect. The, uh, the open strings are no longer effective. Now, let me start demonstrating how this technique works by starting with a C scale here. Now, I'm going to right here in the fifth position, just play a typical C scale. Here we go. Now, if I utilize open strings in this scale wherever diatonically possible, check this out, you get a whole different texture. With all six strings still ringing after the after the scale's been having played, okay. So, okay. Now let's describe exactly what's happening here. Well, I'm starting on the top string, playing the top three notes of a C scale, C B A. Then I go down to the second string, play B and a G and F. Now my next logical choice would be E on the second string, but I want to use open strings. So I'm going to go back to the first string and play an open E string. While I'm keeping the F ringing against the E string to get that texture, then I'm going to play D and C, and now I'm going to play the B as an open string because it's available to me. Now I have three strings ringing, continuing down A on the fourth string, open G. Now watch my right hand here. When I go back up, to play an open string, I'm using the middle finger of my right hand. All the rest of the notes are picked. Now, continuing down, I'm going to use my second or third fingers to slide from F to E on the fifth string. And then D, I will play open with my middle finger of my right hand. And then finally finishing up with C. By the way, that gives you a C major 9 chord. I like that chord. We can do the same technique using the G major scale. And I'll start this one. I'll do this one ascending. I'm going to start on the sixth string. This is also appearing at the bottom of your screen. I'm going to start at the sixth string, play G. Now, I'm going to use what I call, for this technique, a banjo roll technique. Now, for you, those of you who don't know what a banjo roll is, it's using my pick middle and ring fingers of my right hand on consecutive sets of three strings. Now I'll show you when this occurs. I'm going to start with a G on the sixth string, followed by an open A, which I'm going to play with my middle finger. Two strings ringing simultaneously. Then I'm going to go up with my pinky and play at the seventh fret B. C on the fifth string with a big stretch and then open D. Now here's where this banjo roll technique comes into play. I'm going to play the sixth string with my pick, the fifth string with my middle finger, and the fourth string with my ring finger. That way I can have three strings ringing simultaneously, and that gives me this sound. Continuing, I'm going to play the E, which is the next note of the scale, on the fifth string with my pinky, and with my pick of my right hand, and another banjo roll, playing F sharp on the fourth string with my middle finger right hand, and then open G with my ring finger. Another forward banjo roll, and that gives me the full one octave G scale. 
Here's what it sounds like. I like that sound. And the second octave gets a little trickier. I'm going to start the second note of the scale being A with my pinky. Notice that. Then I'm going to reach up with the, my ring finger of my right hand and play an open B. And then come, come back with my middle finger and play the C on the third string. So I'm skipping a string. Hammering on from there to D, from C to D with my third finger. And I'm going to do that same technique again, reaching up, playing the open E string with my ring finger. And I'm going to come down to the second string with my pick and play F sharp. And then another big stretch here with my index finger, reach up and play G. And let me show you what that whole thing sounds like intact. And a nice, so that's a nice little ending, ending technique I like to use for an ending of a song that ends in G. I would just play something like this. And what I've done is I've taken that G, the ending of the scale, and slid my first finger up, putting an A on top, which gives me a G major 9 chord. And then I reach down with my finger and tap G. Just one of my pet little things that I do. Anyway. Let's do the D scale now. We'll do one more scale, and I'll, then we'll, we'll show how this works in context. So starting with the D scale, again, I'll do this one ascending, just to show you how it works. I'm going to start with a slide from F sharp to G on the sixth string. First finger. And now this banjo roll technique will come into play again. Watch. Open A. OK, notice I'm not starting on the root, because it only goes down to E, the guitar. So starting with the third. Then, the next note being B, I'm going to come back to the 6th string, play B on the 7th fret on the 5th, 6th string, C sharp on the 5th string, and open D, and again, using my banjo roll, B, C sharp, and D, pick, middle, ring. Continuing on, I'm going to play E then, the next note, on the fifth string with my pinky, F sharp on the fourth string, and G as an open string. And again, that forward banjo roll, pick middle ring, E, F sharp, G. Next note being A, which I'm going to grab with my pinky, skipping a string and playing open B, coming back to the third string and playing C sharp, and then reaching way up to the, to the third fret of the second string to play D. Now watch my right hand here. I'm playing pick, ring, pick, middle. Now that's subjective. That's, if you want to do that, that's fine. If you don't, that's just my, the way I do it. And descending. Voila. Now we're going to tip the band and see what happens with some open string licks. Here we go. Okay, let's take a look at that first chorus of open string licks, this time played without the background music so you can see exactly what I did. Then we'll break it down. Here's what happened. One, two, three, four.
Now, as you watch me play through those four licks, you will see certain things happening throughout all of them that are common to all of them. And that is the kind of cas descending cascading effect. Now, the way I'm creating that is I'm using, if you look at my right hand here, I'm using a combination of my pick and middle finger. And what I'm doing is for all the times that I play an open string, I'm reaching up with my middle finger and grabbing that so all the notes aren't just played with my pick. And here's the way I played that first E lick. Watch my right hand on this. One, two, three, four. So you can see I'm using a variety of fingers on this one. Now, let me describe it here while you're watching my right hand. I'm starting off with a pull-off from E to C sharp. And I'm coming to the second string, playing that with my pick, and then playing the first string with my ring, middle finger. Then I use a forward banjo roll, pick, middle, ring, across strings three, two, and one, G, G sharp, and E. Then I'm going to go down and play another forward banjo roll, starting on the fourth string, skipping the third string, playing C sharp, open B, and open E. And then finally finishing with a slide from G to G sharp, and then open E with my ring finger. And that's the technique, just alternating between my pick and middle finger. Now let's 